As we've been seeing and as our panel has been seeing, US <coughs> elections are complicated and in the end, they come down to a few voters in a few counties, in a few key states. And this time, those states are just so, so close. What do we need to now look out for? Well, Lewis Guru uh, will be guiding us through the crucial data as it drops. And um, Lewis, just talk us through what you're looking out for. Of course, these key um, seven battleground states. Yes, Helda, it's very exciting and we're going to need a little bit of help to tell this story, aren't we? And we're going to be doing it via this wonderful box of tricks that we've got in front of me now. Let's, um, you mentioned the, the seven key states. Right now, obviously, none of the polls have closed, so this entire map, all 50 states of the Union, all in grey. But, of course, as we know, we've heard so much about the key seven because, basically, 43 of the states, we probably know, unless it's going to be a blowout for one of the other candidates, we probably know how they're going to vote. So let's colour those in, which we've done, and that leaves us seven, doesn't it? It leaves us Georgia. North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona and Nevada. You are going to be hearing a lot about those states throughout the course of the night. Let's give them their electoral college votes so we can see exactly how much they're worth. We can see on the basis of the states that we've already given to either Kamala Harris or Donald Trump, Kamala Harris on 226, Donald Trump on 219. You need 270 electoral college votes in order to win the presidency. Each of the, the different 50, 50 states of the union given a number of electoral college votes based on its population, and that's how we've got 226 to 219. So what are the potential paths for both Donald Trump and Kamala Harris? Well, the early thing, the elder that I'm going to be looking out for most of all, and we're going to actually get this pretty quickly because they tend to count the votes pretty quickly down in the south of the country, is what happens in Georgia, what happens in North Carolina. This states here, North Carolina and Georgia. What happens in those places will give us a really key indication of what is happening nationally. And the truth is, if it's the case that Kamala Harris can win North Carolina, a state that Donald Trump won back in 2020 and indeed in 2016, and she can win Georgia, which Joe Biden won in 2020, first Democrat to win Georgia since Bill Clinton did all the way back in 1992, then she makes her path to the White House so, so much easier. Look, she's already on 258. That is before we get to the traditional blue wall battleground states of the Rust Belt. And then all she would need to do is win Pennsylvania. Hey, presto, she's on 277. She's won the president. She, she, we, we can all go home. That'll be it for us. But if it is the case that Donald Trump can hold on to North Carolina and he can win back Georgia, then things look a bit different, don't they? She's already, he's already back on 251. And if he wins Pennsylvania, then that's game over as well, 270. If, however, it's some combination of all of those things, let's just say for the sake of argument that, uh, that Kamala Harris wins Georgia, he keeps North Carolina, Kamala Harris wins Pennsylvania, then we're in for a longer night. And as you can see, on and on it goes. And theoretically, at least, you could get all the way down to Nevada and Arizona, and we could be here until tomorrow. And indeed, it is not just a case, of course, about the states themselves. You've already hinted at it there as well, uh, Yelda. It's not just about the states, and that's the great thing we can do with this map. We can look into the states and the counties in and of themselves. So look for Pennsylvania. Absolutely nothing coloured in so far, but you can look at somewhere like Erie County. Let's go back to 2020, see what happened there. Erie County, absolutely classic bellwether. Think in UK terms, think of it a little bit like Swindon or somewhere like that. It's a sort of place where if Erie goes your way, chances are the whole country is going your way. You can see Joe Biden won it back in 2020 by a margin of 1,400, just over 1,400. We'll be looking at these specific counties in specific places in specific states throughout the night to give us tantalizing clues as to how the national battle, battleground picture is shaping up. Right, Lewis, thanks very much indeed. Lewis, from what you're saying then, uh, Pennsylvania absolutely key. It is, it is, Mark. I think uh, Pennsylvania, Keystone, Commonwealth uh, of Pennsylvania, the Keystone State, if Kamala Harris can win that, that she's well on her way to the presidency, because there are 96 electoral college votes altogether within the seven swing states, Pennsylvania is the most valuable of them because it's worth 19. And it is hard to see, to be honest, for Kamala Harris or Donald Trump, a path to the presidency without it. It is arithmetically possible. But the other thing to bear in mind as well, and if we just go back to that map, let's go back to the, uh, let's go back to the Road to 270 map here. Let's fill it in again back to tonight, 2024. Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. These are three states that have all voted together in tandem since 1992. They're quite similar states, sort of post-industrial states, more non-college educated white voters there. Chances are, if one of them goes one way, the others go that way as well, and in which case, you will get a victor.